go. Hi guys, um, I hope everyone out there is doing okay, surviving the uh, first part of the, the first week of the lockdown. Um, we've had a few customers calling us and asking us uh, how we can continue to help them. Um, our team of designers are all at home, um, but they're all set up to work from home with their 3D packages. And so we thought it might be a good idea to put together a simple video, just outlining some basics of how to take measurements um, for your own kitchens. And the idea would be that you can then send them through to us and the team can work hard uh, while you guys are at home and do a nice uh, 3D design for you and then be able to present that to you. So the first step would be measuring your kitchen to make sure you've got some accurate measurements that you can send through to us. Um, so I'll run you through some of those basics now. The main things you'll need are a tape measure, obviously, a pen and a paper, um, and a camera to take some photos at the end of the, the measure up. Um, first and foremost, if you set up your piece of paper, you need to do an outline of the kitchen space. So um, you need to include solid walls, any windows, any doors, um, location of the cooker, location of the plumbing, um, and any things like beams or, or obstructions that you might have in your kitchen as well. Um, so I'll quickly draw an outline of this kitchen. Um, wall comes down here to a door. If you just do a little symbol like that, the guys will know that that's a door. Wall continues down and returns back before it comes to a window. If you just do a simple uh, symbol like so to represent a window, uh, the wall continues along and returns back to another window. Um, a long run of wall to some double doors in that area. So once you've got the rough outline, it's time to do a bit of a measure up. Um, so I'll get started on this. Um, understanding the depth, this might be this area here might be quite hard to reach up to to get the measure. So you can use some existing cabinetry um, or grab a step ladder if you have one. Um, in this instance, I'll use the depth of this pantry, which is 605, 605, plus the small amount of depth here uh, that the wall protrudes past the cabinetry. So I'll measure that. That's 55 millimeters. So we'll know that that total will be 660 millimeters deep for that wall. Okay, so we need to measure now from that corner to the end of the uh, run of wall. So to start with, again, I can't reach up there. So I'll measure the width of this current pantry, which is 555. 555 plus the small piece of wall here. Uh, which is 15 millimeters. Okay, now we come to the door. So we need to measure the width of this door. If you go from outside of architrave to outside of architrave, that's the best. In this case, we've got 945. 945. Continuing the measure um, down, we need to get the measure for the rest of that wall there. Um, there's a small amount of wall again, same as the other side. Um, this time it is 12 millimeters. And then we can use this cabinetry to give us an idea of that, that length. Okay, so the wall then returns around at the top there. So in this instance, um, grab a step ladder or a chair um, safely. We need to measure that depth. Which is 515. Then need to measure this wall on the edge where I stopped. Uh, 1060. Okay, now we're up to the window again, outside to outside. One four seven five. 
and the wall. Two fifty plus the width of the fridge. So we'll measure from there back, which is nine seventy. Okay, so the wall returns back around to this window, so we need to take the measure of the depth, which is difficult, so we can use this panel here um, and add it to the difference. So we have 600 millimeters to that point. Let's write down 600 plus this point of wall here, which is 490. 490. Okay, now we've got the width of the window, uh, 1470. 470. Um, with windows, we need to also just be a little bit careful about the height of the bottom of the window. So you can see in this case, the window sill is lower than a standard height bench top. So we just need to include the height of that window as well. So 675. So I just write 675 high from floor inside that window area. Um, now we have a big run of wall. Two 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 zero. So now that gives us pretty much the measurements of the, the whole outside perimeter of the kitchen area. Um, you'll notice in this kitchen there's an island um, which has a sink, so it's quite important to include the location of the plumbing. So to do that we need to use where the plumbing is to a fixed point or a fixed wall. So we'll go from the back wall here to the centre of the sink which is about 2400. And I would just draw a line on the plan to say 2400 from this back wall and then we need to measure from another side fixed wall so in this case we'll go off the left wall uh, about 1700 1700 to the sink okay um, other points as I mentioned um, location of the current cooker and extractor fan is quite important. So if you just get a rough measurement of say 350 to the center, 350 to the center of the extractor bit. Um, and also we need to try and grab the height of the ceiling. So this can be a bit tricky with the tape measure. Um, generally you'll find there are three different height ceilings in New Zealand. So Firstly, 2400 or 2440 um, is a bit higher than if you absolutely stretch to your maximum. Um, that's a standard height ceiling. You'll also get 2700, which is fairly common, and then three meters or above. Um, so if you find something nice and tall, cabinetry wise, hold the tape measure to the maximum, bend it in half, pull it down, and roll the tape up. That measure is 2460. You probably also noticed the confiscated drone, which is sitting on top of the pantry. So hopefully the kids can behave themselves today and they might get it back. <laughs> so 2460 to the ceiling. Okay, aside from that, um, if you're planning on keeping appliances, so microwaves, uh, ovens, dishwashers, if you can grab the appliance specs for that, that'd be great. Um, one of them that people use and keep quite frequently is the fridge. So you can show you a little trick. Um, on the inside of the fridge, you'll have a little certificate, um, either on the inside back of the fridge or somewhere around the fridge that'll have the appliance code or the model number. Um, the guys, our designers can use this to find the correct specs for the fridge. You see we've stopped up to try and uh, get through the shutdown. Um, hopefully that's given you guys some easy quick tips on how to measure your kitchen. Um, it'll definitely give our designers uh, more than enough information to do up a bit of a design for you. 
Um, they can then have an online presentation to show you what they've come up with with our 3D software. Um, if you can get the measures all down like so, take a photo of those and send them to our designers, then they will be able to take it from there. If you do have a chance to take some photos of the space as well, um, just take from each corner and maybe an overall photo looking back at the space, that'll give our designers a really good opportunity to, to do a really nice design for you. Aside from that, we'll talk you through um, things like what you like about the kitchen, what you don't like about the kitchen to get some more insight, um, whether you want a large single sink, a double sink, etc, etc, to try and get the best design for you. If you don't have a tape measure, you can use a piece of A4 paper, and this measurement from side to side is approximately 300 millimeters. So get the kids involved, uh, use the A4 paper and, and try and get as accurate a measure as you can. Um, but I'm sure that once we get our final laser sight measure done, um, all the measurements can be confirmed 100% and we can make sure your kitchen fits perfectly. Um, hopefully all you guys are doing all right out there. Um, this might help pass some time by as well. It'll keep our guys busy and I know they're more than keen to, to help our customers out. So thank you very much and we'll look to hear from you soon.